Beautiful trash. It's a phrase used to describe a high-budget film that has crippling flaws and yet is entertaining in some way, and usually pleasing to the eye. In a lot of ways, it's sort of like a B-movie, where you don't expect it to be good, just fun. Or like certain films that are so bad it's good. But unlike in those cases, beautiful trash refers to where the movie tries to be good and fails miserably, but it's still somehow entertaining. It's the best phrase I can think of to describe Van Helsing. It's a bad movie. I could even go so far as to say it's a terrible movie, but it's one of the best terrible movies I've ever seen. There was a time when a sequel to Bram Stoker's Dracula was kicked around that would center around the character of Abraham Van Helsing, as played by Anthony Hopkins, but it just never panned out. When we eventually got the Van Helsing movie, it was something entirely different, an action film that was a vehicle for Hugh Jackman, who was just starting to become a huge star. The opening of the film is great. It's the best part of it. It opens in black and white, and when you see that Universal logo in monochrome, it's hard not to harken back to the classics of the 30s and 40s. And with this movie having Dracula, werewolves, and Frankenstein's monster, it could easily be taken as a modern version of the Monster Mash movies, such as House of Dracula and House of Frankenstein. And in the beginning, it is sort of like that. It starts with Dr. Frankenstein bringing his creation to life as townspeople attack his castle with torches and pitchforks, intent on killing him for grave robbery. Yeah, I said castle. For some reason he has a castle in Transylvania rather than a laboratory in Germany. But whatever. Count Dracula shows up, revealing himself as Frankenstein's benefactor, who plans to use the creature for some evil purpose. The creature tries to escape with his creator, but is chased to a windmill by the townsfolk who burn it down. As we know from the original Universal picture, that doesn't kill the creature, though it apparently does kill Frankenstein. The opening of the film is grandiose and beautiful. It makes me wish the entire thing was in black and white and shared the same tone. The rest of the film is trash, but it's a good sort of trash. The film from then on is a constant stream of logical fallacies, discontinuity, unbelievable coincidences, disjointed storytelling and direction, and a general lack of identity. At times, the film leans toward horror and suspense. At others, it tries to be a standard adventure flick, and at other times, it leans much more towards comedy. It isn't particularly good at any of these, but manages to be entertaining if only due to the nostalgic feeling you'll get watching it. Assuming you're like me and you used to watch old monster movies on TV whenever you could. The plot is fairly interesting. Van Helsing, who is in no way related to the character from Bram Stoker's novel, is a sort of monster-hunting agent for the Vatican. He starts off fighting Mr. Hyde and then gets his next assignment to fight Dracula. Apparently, somebody once said that none of his family will go to heaven until Dracula is destroyed. And he has only two heirs left. Apparently it actually happens. Is this all it takes to just say it? Kind of a bastard thing to do to your descendants to damn them to purgatory unless they destroy an immortal vampire lord. Well, anyway, Van Helsing is sent to help out. Dracula's plan is the most interesting part of the plot. After hundreds of years boning his three hot wives, he's got some kids. Thousands of them, in fact. Except they're born dead, which does sort of make sense, as he and his brides are undead. He plans to use Frankenstein's technology to bring them to life. First, he tries to use a werewolf as the power source, but 
It only brings some of the kids to life for a brief time, and then they explode. He needs Frankenstein's monster. Later, it's also discovered that only a werewolf can destroy Dracula. Okay, whatever. At this point in the movie, you're done wishing it would make sense. It's a lost cause. One scene that bugs the hell out of me comes at the end. Of course, Dracula likes to keep werewolves around for whatever reason, but he has a cure for them in case they turn on him. And of course, Van Helsing and the last heir, Anna, played by Kate Beckinsale, stumble upon Frankenstein's monster by accident, and Dracula gets him and brings the kids to life. And of course, Anna's brother, previously thought dead, is alive and is now a werewolf and infects Van Helsing. The movie claims that once it's midnight, he'll be in a full werewolf and able to destroy Dracula. But he has to be cured by the last stroke of midnight. What is that, like half a minute? How long could it take a clock to chime 12 times? Maybe they have a clock that chimes really slow because the end battle seems to go on forever, and the by the last stroke thing is conveniently forgotten. This is but one example of the inconsistencies in the plot. The acting in the film ranges from average to below average, though Richard Roxburgh hamming it up as Dracula is somewhat amusing. Hugh Jackman is sadly probably the strongest actor, but he can't seem to keep his accent straight, oftentimes sounding more American than European. Figuring as how he's Australian, I didn't think it would be that much of an issue. The special effects are good, but really strange. For some reason, when werewolves transform, they burst out of their skin, which sloughs off. I figured the hair would just grow right out of their skin. It's a needless effect that makes no sense at all. Well, I could go on and on pointing out flaws. Really, I could do a whole feature just deconstructing this movie and pointing out all the reasons why it's terrible, but it's the sort of movie that, if you turn your brain off for a while, you can enjoy it. Like I said, beautiful trash. The film made plenty of money, but it was a critical failure, and a planned TV spin-off was cancelled. They also made a video game out of it, which played sort of like Devil May Cry. Huh. You'd think they'd make it play like Castlevania. Anyway, my final assessment is, the movie really isn't any good at all, but it's worth a look for a few reasons. It's fun, with decent action, and it has a lot of nostalgia for fans of the old Universal-style films. And the opening black-and-white scene is great. But really, in good conscience, I can't give it any more than a full out of ten. That's being kind of generous, but that's exactly what I'll do. Well, that wraps up the 10 Days of Dracula feature. Have a happy fucking Halloween, and I hope you enjoyed it. I sure as hell did. I'll definitely do this again with more Dracula movies, only next time I'll do it properly and make it an October thing, and I'll bring Frankenstein in on the deal. A lot of people have told me since I started this feature that they've gone to see some of the movies I've recommended, so I'll give one last recommendation. If you haven't already, you need to get Bram Stoker's original novel, Dracula, And the sequel, Dracula the Undead, is now out, written by his direct descendant, Doc Ray Stoker. I haven't read it yet, as I'm currently rereading the original, to get myself in the right frame of mind. I might do a video about it once I finish, but I just thought I would mention both of those books. Anyway, once again, happy fucking Halloween. I'll be doing this again next year.